What surprised you about your richer or poorer spouse's way of life? Making financial decisions based around the three paycheck month. If you're paid every two weeks, most months you get two paychecks. All of your monthly bills and budgeting is based on those two paychecks. But twice a year, there are three paydays a month, and that's when you can actually solve problems. That's when you can get the car registered or fix the dryer or get the cats paid. The other ten months, you're doing maintenance and trying to scrape by. Three paycheck months, you can actually try to fix problems. I was the poor one. My husband, at the time still boyfriend, took me out to a very nice restaurant. The waiter asked if I wanted pepper on my Caesar salad that was just made table side. I said sure, and he goes about it. The thing is, I didn't know you had to say stop. My husband slowly realizes this, but decides to see it play out. He did eventually say that I needed to say stop. I just thought a Caesar was had this way, as it was the first time of mine even eating a salad that wasn't just iceberg and ranch dressing. It still tasted fine, just a little bit too much pepper. I was adopted at age 7. I lived in extreme poverty, and then all of a sudden I lived with a doctor who bought gifts for birthdays and Christmas. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know you could go to the store to get food. I just thought you went to the church and had to pray before they gave you a bag of food. When the family had people over for dinner, if they ended the prayer before the meal with FHB Amen, it was a signal to let the children know that they don't have enough food for everyone, so take smaller servings and let the guests get a regular serving. FHB equals family hold back. They were always generous to their friends and didn't let their lack of funds embarrass themselves when doing so. I was just thinking the same thing. My family was considered antisocial. It wasn't because we didn't like socializing or going to events, it's because we couldn't even afford to, and if mum and dad organized dinners, they planned months beforehand and scraped every cent together to pay for it. My ex was stunned when I told her I've only ever had one birthday party. 21st, because mum and dad had no money. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, rich people who want to marry someone significantly poorer. Hello, it's me. Hi. Sorry to the last author, I'm not sure your method is going to be helped out much here, I just thought I'd spread your industrious gold digging to YouTube as well as in the forum it was originally posted in. Honestly, food insecurity. When we were first married, she would get visibly uneasy if the food in the house was running low. She'd never overeat or anything, she was just always concerned about it. A lot of times when she was younger, she went hungry. On the humorous side though, she hates camping. Her answer is always the same. I camped because it was fun, and she camped because they couldn't afford hotels. For me, my love of camping started from growing up poor. The only family vacations my single mom and brother and I had were family reunions several states away. It involved long road trips and a crappy car with no AC, but we got to camp in tents and get a break away from reality. We also ate a lot better over a campfire than me making hamburger helper for my brother while my mom went to bed early. She worked hard to support us and battled with depression untreated for years until she could afford medication. Those trips were good for all of us. She and her mother lived with her grandfather to not be homeless because her grandfather owned a house. She was putting community college payments on her credit card and building debt with it. I paid off her credit cards when we were dating and she cried from me being so nice. It was only like $1,300. I brought a condo and we got married, then we bought a house. I never really considered myself rich until I started dating her and learned that a trip to Wendy's was a treat. I grew up middle class and we're currently middle class now. Huh. I get giddy with excitement after grocery shopping trips. It just feels so good to even have enough food. Though I still have to constantly remind myself that I'm allowed to eat if I'm hungry, I'm a grown-up. I bought it. That and snacks. We were never allowed to snack between meals and never bought anything extra that wasn't absolutely necessary. My husband had to teach me... You buy something tasty that you don't actually need, and then you can just sit and eat it whenever you feel like it. Amazing. I still don't really do it, but it's nice to know that I can. My wife was born and raised in the Soviet Union. She still goes crazy for fresh fruit, like it's the most extravagant luxury. The prevailing mindset in my husband's community growing up was that insurance was something only rich people had. Not health insurance, mind you. Well, not just health insurance. Auto insurance. Going without it was a way of life for most everyone he knew. My significant other has to constantly remind me that I can go to the doctor whenever I need to, instead of just hoping I don't die. Sandwiches. When I made him a sandwich, I only put one thin slice of meat in it. He couldn't believe that was how I had sandwiches growing up. Growing up, we weren't allowed to just eat deli slices. It had to go between two pieces of bread because that would fill you up faster and save on meat costs. I'm not well off, but my stepfather is. I was raised by a single mum who spent money on everything, and bills were always behind. She just couldn't manage her money at all. 
In her 50s, she met and married a multimillionaire. We're in middle America, so that goes further than maybe in a lot of areas. They've given themselves $10,000 a month budget to live on, living on interest. They own their own home. Anyway, once my mom met him and they all got their finance situated and paid off, she won't spend a penny. He spends like it's going out of style. He's actually begged me to take her shopping to get clothes and accessories. She won't do it. She spent more when she was a single mum with nothing. It makes no sense to me, at least buy a new outfit. She's hell-bent not to use a penny of his money. They barely even have any groceries. If they have anything, it's because he buys it for them. She's a retired nurse that gets a retirement and social security, but she won't spend anything. She lives poorer now than at any other time in her life. This sounds less like a financial issue and more like she's trying to preserve her pride. She knows that people will think she's a gold digger if she spends his money, so she's going to the opposite extreme and refusing to benefit from any of it. Absolutely. Sounds like she doesn't want to come off as a gold digger who spends her husband's money. But also, she may have realized that she doesn't really need to spend much money anymore if basics are covered and she doesn't have young kids. My mom spends very little money, as does my dad. They have money, but they've always been bought up frugal. I realized that the biggest expense has always been us kids. Piano lessons for us, trips for us to see grandparents, dinner if it's our birthdays, toys every so often. Now they don't have to spend on that stuff. They occasionally eat out, they travel a bit, but usually that's paid for by my dad's company. So they just don't spend much. They don't enjoy spending in and of itself, and they just spent money in the past to take care of the family. I didn't marry this woman, but when we started dating, she always just wanted to chill at my place, never hers, which was fine, but she gained 35 pounds in just like a few months of dating. She was 100 pounds when we started dating. Not that it was a bad thing. One, I'm a chubby man, and two, I was just glad she wasn't preggers. Anyway, turns out her family couldn't, like, afford dinner sometimes, so suddenly she had a place to eat every night and gorged herself. I know two siblings who were starved by their dad for years until CPS took them away and placed them with their biological mother. From there, they gained at least 100 pounds, respectively, and will not stop gorging themselves on food. At first, I didn't understand, but now that I'm older, I know. Food scarcity is traumatizing. I fell in love with my uni best friend who really didn't have any money. When I get a job for my birthday, I decided to plan a holiday and offered to bring him along. He doesn't know I'm in love with him at all, but maybe I should tell him. Well, this is a bold move. I just hope he's not the kind to get insecure about a woman paying the lion's share of that sort of thing. My partner and I are both poor, but different kinds of poor. She's never been homeless or not had enough to eat, while I have. She's extremely frugal and hates buying anything we don't need. I feel a desperate need to stock up if we have any extra money, and it's a fight for me not to fill our house with canned and dry goods in case we don't have enough money to buy food next month for some reason. It makes no sense, but my instinct is to hoard food because there was just never enough of it around growing up. I'm not rich at all, but my husband came from a very poor Mexican village. He told me he used to shower outside because there was no in-house plumbing and use leaves as toilet paper. I mean, there's poor and there's my husband's previous life poor. He's been living in the US for 12 years now, but when we first met it was so interesting seeing life through his childlike eyes. Going to the cinema was a huge event for him. Heating food up in a microwave was a totally foreign concept, and staying at fancy hotels when we went on vacation was like, whoa! I still see him surprised by things now and then, and it just reminds me how much I take my middle status class for granted. Mexican here. You'd be surprised at how common that really is. In Tantoyuca, there's a hill called Hollywood, where there's no plumbing and no government help. There are women there who make tamales and other large numbered meals for every kid in the neighborhood because their parents can't feed them and we don't abandon our own. Also, it's very common to be shocked by things like fancy hotels because ours are nice, sure, but there's no rich gringo nice and it always appalls me on the TV. Hamburger Helper She hates it because it would be her meal five times a week growing up. I'd never seen Hamburger Helper before I went to college, and I love that stuff. Ten for ten dollar deals are awesome. My foster daughter was the same way with pasta. She ate so much of it before we got her that she hated it. The first meal I made her on her first night with us? Pasta. She didn't say a word and ate her dinner, but later I found out she didn't like pasta because of how much of it she had eaten before. I always took her grocery shopping so she could pick out stuff she liked after that. She was shocked when she found out red delicious apples weren't the only variety out there. I think she overdosed on honey crisp apples when I first introduced them to her. My significant other said, Today I made rent, meaning today I've earned enough or accumulated enough to pay the rent, and I realized that this is a monthly accomplishment to someone with no fixed income or salary. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. 
The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. One of my exes could pull in a lot of money, easily twice or thrice what I could. He was so incredibly bad at saving this money, down to, say, setting himself up as a company to avoid paying higher rate of tax, but then paying a large amount each month to an accounting company to handle his taxes, which he'd do himself anyway because he didn't trust them to get it right. He'd pay for taxis from one end of the city to the other, or hire cars rather than use public transport. Flights cancelled? Book new ones. Never even bother to claim back on insurance. Buy a sports car? Wreck it? Sell it for scrap. He'd work contracts and then take time off work on his own startup, but spend every weekend just going out and buying substances and booze. Haha, money really means nothing to you, huh? But then when we became a long-term couple, I started to feel like his mother. Man, will you not just fill out the insurance paperwork? I had an ex that must have made six figures as a specialty electrician of some sort, but legitimately had no clue how much, because his work would pay for things for him. I have no idea how it all worked out, but his work paid for all of his lodging and reoccurring bills. Cable, utilities, weekly maid service. So he had no idea how much any of that stuff costed. Even after that, he ate out, drank, and smoked constantly, had multiple state-of-the-art entertainment systems, played hockey, had Yankees season tickets, 10k plus, and kept envelopes of cash from cashed paychecks around his house. I asked once how he does his taxes. The company handled it. Oh, and he had multiple DUIs where he or the company paid for a lawyer and then did at least one of those rehab programs where you're monitored and substance tested constantly. I can't imagine any of that was cheap. My husband grew up in a family where they were comfortable but on a strict budget. Six kids and mum on disability. My family had no budget. One day we were at the grocery store and he always insists on walking up and down every aisle. I finally lost it because he was taking so long and asked him why he did it. Growing up, we could only spend $100 a week on groceries for all of us. I always had to put what I wanted back because I couldn't afford it. Now I can afford whatever I like, so I just like to look at everything I could have. Took him 10 years to tell me this. I felt like a terrible person. I've had a few people write in that $100 a week is a huge budget and how is that a stretch? We live in a city with an extremely high cost of living. It's in the top 30 in the world. Getting a family of four fed for that much weekly would be a huge stretch here and his family did an amazing job. Not rich per se, but with a partner who was raised by a teen mom and grew up poor. Sometimes I just want rice and vegetables for dinner, and that's a no from her. She won't go back to that life. My dad was the opposite. Grew up poor and built a business up and ended up doing quite well. He still eats like there's only 25 cents in his checking account. Left alone, he would gladly eat ramen every day, and his go-to meal is rice porridge. We went to Osteria Francescana in Modena a few years ago, literally named the best restaurant in the world. We all went for the tasting menu, but he asked to order a la carte. And he wanted to order buttered fettuccine. He only agreed to the tasting menu when they insisted that the whole table had to do it if some of us were doing it. He'll even insist on eating things that have been burnt or drink milk that's just starting to turn. I was with a girl for a while who grew up in a pretty broken home. Still surprises me just how bad her spending habits are. She racks up credit card debt like it's nothing. She lived in the desert without air conditioning. The narrator would dearly love some context here. Did she grow up in the desert? Or was she choosing to live out there when there were better options available to save on cost of living? We've been long-term dating. She comes from a lower-income family than me. Pets. I was always surprised by the number of pets she and her family had living in the trailer and how much of a share of their income they spent on them. My dad is a successful business owner now with several houses and multiple sources of income. But he grew up dirt poor when he had parents and became even poorer when he was out on his own at 14. Think sleeping on the floor of a gas station men's room poor. To this day, he'll take a small handful of cereal out of his bowl before he pours milk in and put it back in the box so he'll always have some cereal for later. Over 40 years later and the pain and worry of growing up poor without luxuries like breakfast cereal will still affect him. Growing up without money does crappy things to people. Credit cards were avoided. For me growing up, we were encouraged to get a credit card in our name and use it as much as possible in order to build credit. There was always money to pay it off each month, so it made sense to 1. Build credit and 2. Collect airline miles or whatever the reward was back in the day. When we got together, she always used cash or debit card. She had a credit card for emergencies and avoided using it otherwise. It took a long time to get her over her aversion and skepticism. We were fortunate enough to have two good paying jobs though it also taught me a healthy appreciation for what it means to have a financial cushion. I dated a one-percenter briefly. She was surprised I willingly went inside fast food restaurants. 
Since people are saying 1% is still a huge range of income, I just looked up her dad and he pulls in over 10 million a year. I'm not dating her, but she's a good friend of mine and her parents are definitely one percenters. I told her I had to work this summer to save up for graduation and that money was going to be tight for the next year, but I'd love to go on a safari after graduation if I managed to save enough. Mind you, I'm solidly upper middle class. Her parents paid for it just because I'd helped her move into her apartment. It's not like that's what friends are for or anything. It's hard to see it this way, but paying for your trip was not a hardship for them. It was a small blip that was a nice thing to do for a friend. Just like helping your friend move was a blip for you. I'm from a middle class family, but my wife's parents are near billionaires. 0.001%. She was shocked about many things. One, that I considered the cost of food and groceries at all. They'll go to gourmet food stores and spend over $1,000 and say things like, Well, it's for food. We're ingesting this stuff. It should be the best. Two, Booking non-first class airfare on any long trip would be considered cruel and unusual punishment to her. 3. No concerns about utilities, insurance premiums, no comparison shopping on routine things at all. 4. Every vacation is the finest you can imagine, oftentimes bordering on ridiculous, having so many upsells on packages and bespoke items that it's just wasteful. 5. No concept of debt and understanding of how normal people live. 6. My wife was shocked when I save things that get wet or muddy. She would just want to throw things like clothes and fine items in the trash away when they were just lightly bruised. We're very much in love and have shown each other a lot. She enjoys hanging with my salt-of-the-earth mum more than her own family at this point. I like being spoiled here and there as well. It's a great mix. Now I've adopted her standard of living. We met in medical school. She did a decent job of hiding her privilege there. Our relationship grew out of our shared sense of humor and, of course, physical attraction. Not super rich by any means, but my husband said he'll always be surprised by the following. How I lived off 13k in 2011. Resiliency to survive financially and pursue my dreams of being the first college graduate in my family. How I didn't know what spinach was or tasted like until our first few dates. In addition to a lot of other leafy greens. First real date in my 20s. We went to a steakhouse. When the waiter asked how I wanted my steak, I said cooked. Ha! Huh? Yikes. Didn't know there was any other way than how my dad cooked steaks. Cheap flat steaks topped with ketchup or ranch dressing. I was the poor one. It absolutely floored me how my wife acts when something broke like a car, appliance, clothes, etc. As a child living below the poverty line, replacing a tire or other necessities was a disaster, requiring tricky trade-offs in the budget or just plain acceptance of how boned you were. When my wife's phone broke, I went into full panic mode while she just shrugged and said, We can just get a new one this afternoon. And then we did. I'm normally a Picasso, MacGyver of the duct tape and trash bag world. This skill helped me break into IT. Sadly, the phone was beyond repair. Trust me, if I could have fixed it, I would have. In my case, I'm from the wealthy family and my partner grew up poor. A couple of months ago, our new TV from a big box store broke suddenly. He bought the warranty, which I never do, I didn't think they worked, and he spent like five hours on the phone over three days and got us a replacement TV, which is not something I would have done or thought of doing, which makes me sound so spoiled, but I learned something for sure. He was making good money but came from a poor family. One thing that surprised me was the lack of budgeting. No knowledge of 401k or Roth IRA. Retirement seemed like something that he'd never get to do. Even though he made good money, he was starting to rack up credit card debt. Now he's much better at it than I am. He adores budgeting and looks forward to financial independence and retiring early. I'm from the poorer family. Not super poor, but my in-laws have a stupid amount of money, so by comparison, I'm very poor. But I think I can answer for her. We have two young kids and my wife was shocked when I said we should look for clothes and toys for them at a local flea market and garage sales. The idea never occurred to her that we could save money by getting some gently used items. She had never even been to a garage sale in her life. She's grown to love them and now questions whether it's worth to buy any item new or not before running to Amazon or a store. Her parents think it's disgusting we make our kids wear clothes that another child had before, but they don't pay my bills. She wouldn't waste any food ever. We went through a few rounds of her getting sick from eating month-old muffins and similar before I convinced her it was okay to toss old food and go shopping. My wife genuinely thought, and her family still does, that there's some direct relationship between someone's net worth and the labels they purchase. If someone doesn't have a Gucci bag or a Rolex watch, why, it's because they can't afford it. My wife was astonished when I first told her that people exist that are ultra-wealthy and yet drive old cars and wear clothes without labels. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. 
Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.